Welcome to another episode of the Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast, where John hey! Farquhar, whoops, the other way, and Chris Harris, <laughs> the other way, there we go, uh, we're your host, up and have some fun, that's all, that's right, that's today, right. Hey, John and I, hey, before you yeah. get started, uh, can I say something, check out my new shirt, check, <sighs> check this out. This is this is just awesome. Like, you know, I got this really cool shirt on with with this big logo that says Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast. You know what? This just makes me feel that much more important. <laughs> oh Lord. Hey. Yeah. Johnny. We decided yep. it was a great suggestion, by the way. This was John's suggestion that we do a series of um podcasts. So we've got some guests coming up, uh, but in between, we're going to be uh, throwing a series together, and we're going to be talking about truck driver files. Yep. Right? Exactly. Yep. Yep. How important they are, what should be in there, what uh, what's required by law, and we'll even talk about what's a good practice, what should you have in there, where, and, and how you should keep these things in, in compliance, as well as some people kind of put way too much information in there that shouldn't be in a particular file, but we should get that in another file. So we're going to talk about how all this information should be collected, gathered, and uh, compiled. We're going, to, we're going to be talking about truck driver files, uh, the rules, the regs, yep. and we're going to give you some tips and tricks on how to get things mm-hmm. uh, in mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. You know, So we're, yep. we'll do an episode, for example, on a road evaluation. Um, yep. And what should be, you know, all that kind of stuff. Hey, I, maybe I should pull my mic down. That, hey, there that you would, go. <laughs> just, I can hear you now. It's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lordy, lordy. Got to gotta love doing lives on Friday because, uh, oh, there. Yes. Can I get rid of the? Somehow I keep shrinking. Uh, mm. <laughs> ten years. Why do we need 10 years on an application form, John? Well, requirement by law, uh, we want to kind of have an idea of, uh, well, what was your history like over the last 10 years? Hey, maybe you worked at the same employer for 10 years. Awesome. Um, but maybe you've worked at uh, 20 different employers over the last 10 years. So it's it's kind of important that we get an idea of the structure of your background. All right. And for some reason, again, even at your daughter's now, you are freezing. Ah, it's just wild. I'm at a top secret location here in southwestern Ontario. So try and pick it out on the map. So you got to have 10 years. And the FMCSA says you've got to do history investigation for three years. But if the person had a CDL uh, going back, you may have to go back all the way to 10 if they had a commercial driver's license, CDL. I hate using those acronyms in case somebody doesn't... uh, Understand them. All right. Yep. Next one yep. on the list. A signed drug test pre-employment statement. What the heck are mm-hmm. they talking about, Johnny? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, if you're going to run to the U.S. here in this case, uh, we have to be in compliance with the drug and alcohol regulations. So uh, most drivers will have to do a pre-employment uh, test. So the trick is we're signing off on that as a driver. We're giving the, the company permission to gather this information on our behalf and, uh, hey, tell us where to go get our uh, our test done. Yeah, and what drugs are going to be testing for. Correct. E.G. And alcohol as well. Yep. Yep. Um, I, I was just going to say E.G. Uh, cannabis. Yep. Um. <laughs> cannabis. Uh, cocaine, I believe. Um, methamphetamines. Yeah, there's a whole uh, list there. I can't there, say yeah. most of them. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. Some of them are quite about this long. So, yeah. So, yeah. but that, that'll all will be on that statement to tell you what they're being tested for. So, so there's usually no prescription medication, uh, unless of course your uh, prescription medication is a banned substance. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, in a lot of them, um, it, it has happened. Let me see if I can put myself on here. Yeah. Um, it has happened. I don't know what's going on today, uh, yeah. but it has happened yeah. that doctors uh, prescribe things like um, uh, what's that new oil that uh, cannabis products? Oh yeah, the CBD and, oil. Yes, right. And yep. they can have uh, THC yep. in them 
if uh, yep. you're not careful, yep. and which is bad Correct. for truck drivers. Yep. And hey, yep. uh, that could be troublesome. Yeah, and you could be on a uh, a Tylenol that has a, a high codeine level, um, which will oh, yes. cause you to test positive. So, so these are things. So it's always a matter of you know if you're going to get into prescription medication, make sure that your doctor knows that you are a cross border truck driver and that you have to you know test randomly uh, for banned substances so that they make sure they don't give you something they shouldn't be. Yeah, so it's called communication. Talk to your doctor right. and let them know what exactly. it is that you do. Yeah. Well, right. and that's where that, that, that pre-employment statement is so important. Like, you should actually request a copy of that from the employer when you're signing it. Because go, can I have a copy of that? So I make sure that I am aware of what these banned substances are. So when I have a conversation with my doctor and he goes, hey, we're going to put you on these new kind of medications and whatnot. Hey, does it qualify with this, this list here? Am I not going to make sure you're not going to get in trouble? Yeah, good idea. And I had not thought of that. So that's a great suggestion. Ask, get a photocopy of this document yep. that you're signing so that you can exactly. take it to your doctor. Um, yep. So next is controlled substance test results. And I put a little yep. note here uh, before entering, uh, before being dispatched to the U.S. or entering the U.S. But uh, what are we talking about? Why? This this, this is where we got to have the results of that drug and alcohol testing. We need to make sure that we're, again, qualified. Uh, we're not under the influence or have uh, any of these banned substances in our body before we go to the U.S. The U.S. says don't even think about it if you've got that in your system. Yeah, you, you just got to make sure you're clear. Um, mm -hmm. And, I mean, the the company dispatching you has to have negative test results on file right. before you enter the u.s um, right and then hey this this thing here three years of references mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like so this, pain. this ties in yeah this ties right in with your 10-year uh, history right so what we right. want to do is we want we want to verify the first or not the first the most current three years of your uh, work history. So this is where you would reach out to the previous employer and get some information to go, hey, how what did he do? Any crashes, any violations, any issues? Would you rehire this person? Things along that line. So this is required for the three-year period. Now, hopefully with any luck, hey, maybe you've only worked for one employer and it makes your new employer's job real easy because they just have to do one reference check. So, but if you've had six in the last three years, yeah, we might want to think about, do we want to hire this guy? Because is he even going to stay with us? So, but that's well, for another conversation. Well, in another conversation, how, how much does it cost to hire a driver? What's the cost yep. of having that truck sit empty? Uh, you know, yep. anyways, uh, that is yep. another conversation. Next on the list, the, in oh, let me talk about this one because. Yes, please. This, this is right up your alley. <laughs> Uh, well, initial driver abstract, and then the next one, uh, if you're from Ontario or Alberta, I don't know if anybody else has a commercial driver's abstract, but certainly Ontario and Alberta uh, do. And I say initial. Uh, both of them should be mm -hmm. within 30 days of uh, the driver applying. But in case you need to defend, if you ever get sued, and this driver's in a crash and you get sued for negligent hiring, this is one of the hiring documents that you made your initial decision upon. Uh, so when you hired this driver, you said, hey, I think this is going to be a good fit for the company. And you part of that decision is based on these documents that you have. So never, let me emphasize that again, never, never throw mm -hmm. out the originals. I know a lot of people right. get driver abstracts every 90 days. Great. Keep them yep. for two years and then toss yep. those in the garbage, but not right. the originals of right. the um, abstracts. You, anything that helps you make the hiring decision, keep it, keep mm -hmm. it, keep it, keep mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, hey, that was two for one. That hey, was... there you go. Good deal. <laughs> okay. Uh, Three-year um, MVR or abstract, the date. Why yep. am I concerned about the date? Well, we want to make sure the date that we received it and the date that was on the document, because uh, you'd made the, the comment, I don't want it any more than 30 days old, right? So this is something where we want to go, well, okay, when did we receive a copy of this? 
because a lot of times carriers are probably doing uh, on the basis of the drivers providing you with a copy of these abstracts. Right. And uh, for MTO and I think DOT regulations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I, th I know Ontario and I think the American regulation says that you have to have a driver abstract uh, every 12 months, a current one. Yep. That's what they consider Correct. to be current within 12 months. Correct. And so yep. you, you need to know the date of the abstract so that you can pull it on a regular basis. Um, mm -hmm. John and I would tell you every 90 days, but the, the mm -hmm. law mm -hmm. says once per year, within 12 right. months, you have to have that on uh, in there. So just thought we would cover that. Yep. Uh, the commercial driver abstract or the CVOR abstract for the driver, same deal mm -hmm. there. Ah, copy yep. of the driver yep. license. That would be next. Yes. Yes. So very important. And, and one of the things I see, unfortunately, too many times is all we're doing is getting a copy of the front of the license. We need both sides to be in that file, front and back of the license. So, you know, when you say copy of the license, that means both sides, people. Good point. And that is what is required by law. I just question, John, what's on the backside of an Ontario driver's license nowadays? Is there any information? Oh, there is. There is. There's some barcode there? information there. But the, the big thing is there actually is some dates on the back of that driver's license. Is there? Yeah. See, and that's... And I, I'm, I'm just... I, don't, I don't have mine on me or I, I, I'd even show it to you, so... Well, I, I'm afraid to show it, just in case. <laughs> well, hey, we we're don't on the see internet. Your picture. <laughs> but but right. your picture would get out, you know, and it probably looks like you, when you were in cell block A. Well, yeah. Okay, now I'm wondering where is my driver's <laughs> license? Am I driving around without a copy of it? Well, uh, actually, oh, I don't even think you need it. You don't need a driver's license because you own a Tesla. It drives oh. itself. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, so there is um, the barcode type information there. Yep. Yep. Uh, but um, I tried to keep it moving, but yeah, nothing else. Yeah. Well, no, it does yeah. have There's some dates. I can't there, read I that. Um, yeah. Well, I'm a, it says class something, uh, nine yeah. class and 12 restrictions. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, hopefully, that's restricted. not me. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but a current copy yep. of the driver's license is required. Yep. Um, yep. And of course, on my list here, uh, I put down things like expiry date because, again, you got to yes. have a current copy of the driver's yes. license. Yeah. Well, and, and this is where it's perfect because instead of having to go to the picture that 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 copy of the driver's license that you've you've uh, taken, why go looking for that? Put it like you've got it right there. What is the the expiry date of that license? That's what's so easy. It's a quick lookup, you know, because this page is going to be in the front of your driver qualification file, and I can have a quick look at it and go, oh, okay, no, he's still another year out before his license is going to expire. This is really good. So rather than having to go through each picture. Well, and I'm just, as you're talking there, I'm just thinking, and maybe people can leave us a, um, a uh, what do you call it, a comment. Uh, comment, yes. If this is of value to you, would it be of value for me to make a, an Excel spreadsheet? It would be very simple. Mm -hmm. uh, an Excel spreadsheet for tracking things like, um, when do I have to pull the abstracts? When when yep. does a driver's license expire? It would be a very simple thing, but I could do it sure. up and give it away. Yeah. Um, yep. If you think it's of value, people let us sure. know. Or exactly. John can make it exactly. up. What the heck? Why am yeah, I? Jeez. Exactly. You know what? But hey, <laughs> give us some feedback, you know, because that's, that's the whole key thing is, is give us some feedback. Give us some likes and tell us what you want to see. That's what this whole program is all about. So we, we can't build anything and give it away for free if you don't tell us what you want. So we're here to help. Exactly. Um, okay. Criminal record search. Yep. Kind of, uh, yep. you know, important. Only yep. if you're a cross-border carrier, maybe. Exactly, exactly. Do, do Canadian-only carriers or regional carriers, carriers that stay within the province, do they pull uh, criminal abstracts? Should they pull uh, criminal abstracts? Uh, it, it, in my mind, it is a best practice by all means. Um, there are a number of 
customers that will require the motor carrier to do uh, criminal checks on their drivers because of maybe the facility that they're going to go into uh, while loading or unloading or maybe the fact of the cargo type that they're hauling and stuff like that. So it's definitely a good practice by all means. It, it doesn't hurt. Now, to say, should you hire a driver that has a criminal background? Well, I guess it depends on what type of criminal activity they've been involved in. You know, um, not sh- fair to penalize everybody for something that happened in their teenage years when they're now in their 40s and 50s and they've done very well. But there are certain things that, you know what, could stop you from crossing the border, could stop you from going into a particular customer facility. So always best to know. And then that way you can work with that driver, schedule that driver on, on specific runs that will make sure that they're successful on. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I think, and I hadn't really thought of the customer aspect before, but yeah, I'm yep. sure some yep. customers um, want you to know, you being the trucking company, yep. uh, want you yep. to know who it is that's coming into their yep. facility. So, right. interesting. Yep. Yeah. Uh, written tests. There yep. is some controversy, I think, over this one. Oh, uh, written big time, tests. Big time. Yeah. There there used to be an awesome written test. And you'll probably remember this back from back in the day, because I, I know I completed it several times. And I believe it was uh almost sixty some odd questions long. It was put out by the FMCSA and it was all based on the FMCSA regulations. So and it was an awesome test. It had great, great information in it, made you go get out the green and white book and look for the answers if you didn't know them already. And and it was a good knowledge verification process. And I love Loved it, and then the uh, the US DOT FMCSA took it away and said that ah, no longer needs to be part of the qualification file. But Chris and I will both tell you, from a best practice approach, you need to have some knowledge verification in there. We need to verify that these guys know what some of the regulations are, what some of the rules are. You know, even if it's simplistic approaches. Yep, and secondarily. Uh, because if they go into the U.S., they've got to be able to read, write, speak the English language yep. sufficiently to converse with them. Anyways, that, there's yep. a regulation about being sure. able to read and write. Well, exactly. giving people a certain knowledge test would help verify that they have the uh, yes. the skills yes. to be able to read and write. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, the, and the trick with conducting that skill test is to make sure they do it in front of you or in your, on your premises and whatnot. Oh, yes. Not take it home and have their kids do it. You know, maybe their kids speak better English and whatnot or their brother-in-law. Yeah, no, do it in front of you. That way you can verify. Obviously, through the interview process, you're going to find out, hey, you can speak pretty good English. This is good. You know, complete the application so that I can see that you can write and you can do this. By having the test done shows me that you can read and you can understand what the answers are that I'm looking for. Okay. Let's get through the next two bullet points, uh, and sure. then um, we're not going to get into the last page. So the next, no, because um, you know, there's a lot more on here that I think yep. should be in the driver file. But uh, annual reviews and a record of violations. Yeah. Oh, did you want to do that road test one, or is that coming up oh. after? No. Yeah. Okay. We can do road test. Yeah. So we got three to cover yeah. real quick. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. road test. And yep. you know, I put down here forty miles or sixty five k. Is that legit? Yep. Like, um, you know, is that necessary? There, there, and and we're back there, up to there two is, viewers. Yeah. Holy smoke! Right. We're hitting records. Yeah. Woohoo! Oh, good deal. There, there is no requirement by law that says how long your road evaluation needs to be, you know, doing that road test. But it has to be of sufficient nature because of you need to incorporate into that road test all the various risks and aspects that that driver is going to do or touch on a daily basis. So, you know, I encourage people, make sure you have left turns, right turns, stop lights, stop signs, railroad crossings. That's uh, the on one ramp, I was going to say. Off-ramp. Yep. So, you know, there's the, anything that you're going to deal with in your travels should be part of this. If you're expecting a driver to travel at night, maybe he's going to run a dedicated run and travel at night. Well, then let's do the road test at night, you know. So these, these things kind of come into play. that's not convenient here. for me, John. Well, I'm sorry, Chris, but uh, you know what? If if you're going to hire people, you got to be inconvenienced. <laughs> We're in the trucking industry. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm in total agreement with you. Yeah. 
Yep, exactly. So, and unfortunately, I, I I love what you've got there. Minimum of 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 required miles because some people are like, yeah, let's go around the block. That's oh. not going to do it, you know. Like like you need to spend an hour, two hours with this guy or this driver because what you're trying to do is get them to drop their guard. Because I'll guarantee you, you take me out for a road test, I'm going to be on my best behavior. Actually, I'm going to be on my bestest behavior because I'm going to show you how good I am. But what as an instructor, what I would be doing is trying to get him off guard, distract him, have conversation, get kind of, I want to know a little bit more about you. We're in the cab together. This is a perfect opportunity. But at the same time, I'm trying to see if I can pull your focus off of the task of driving that vehicle, because that's going to help me to understand, do you have proper control or are you easily distracted? All righty. Good points. Good points. Annual review record of violation. Mm-hmm. And this That's is something. That's a good one because. Go well, ahead. I, it's in the CVR safety manual that yep. uh, MTO wants to see an annual review. And of course, yep. if you cross border, the FMCSA says you've got to have a it's certificate a of violations, uh, which is right. where the driver declares to the carrier what the violations were for the last 12 months. And then the annual review is where the carrier reviews everything and says, yep, Mm -hmm. this driver is still qualified to work here. So, yeah, this is what's perfect when it, when, when you're pulling your driver abstracts, this, you make this part of that review process. I've actually, uh, I've actually met uh, a couple of carriers who have actually taken the annual review and made it a semi annual review. You know, they pull their abstracts quarterly, but every six months they do this review because they said, we don't want to wait 12 months. We want to make sure all our drivers are on board. We, we got good drivers and whatnot. And they found it helps actually with engagement with the driver and go, you know, opportunity kind of go, wow, good job. You guys are doing great. You know what? I'm very, very happy with your performance. And, uh, you know, you can turn it into a performance review if you want. So, but yeah, it just kind of adds a little more fun. Does does this annual review, this piece of paper, does it have to be conducted in front of the driver? Like, does it have to be person to person? By that law? would be best practice. Yeah, yes. uh, okay. it, it would be best practice by all means. But I, I don't believe there's a requirement you have to be sitting across from that person. Um, right. You I can see. even hand that to their manager and say, hey, when you're meeting with your drivers, can you kind of go through this? Because the, there is uh, on that form there. Well, and we'll get into that in the in the series. But in that form, there is a spot for the driver to complete some information and sign off. And then for the company representative to sign off. So if you can do it face to face, I think that's way better. It helps the driver understand why you're looking at this information yeah i think that's awesome and the last thing this is controversial the receipt of the fmcs fmcsr driver handbook so you had mm-hmm. mentioned your green and white book yep the green right? and white book yep yep and again i'm asking for comments out there uh, yep. Yep. everybody is it the law that you must give this green and white book to every driver who crosses the border. I I don't want to answer that. I want to see if we get people to comment. I want to see what the comments are. That's and then so what what we'll do is we'll provide that answer to that when we get to that in our series. So but right now well, I'm not yeah, even, we want to hear comment. I'm not even sure we can provide it because I'd like to know. I know there's a lot of companies yep. that spend ten to fifteen dollars a book and give it to every oh, yeah. driver. Yep. Um, because they believe uh, it's part of the regulations. And I'm asking for help, quite honestly. Uh, If it is part of the regulations, let me know what the reg is. Um, I know the answer. Do you? Okay. I I, I know the answer, but I'm not going to tell them. (laughs) (laughs) Our listeners have to chime in. Our listeners have to chime in and, and, and tell us what they think the answer is. Or what they know the answer to be that would be even better so Uh, that's perfect why don't we put a time limit on this john um yeah how long do you want to withhold the answer and then you can put it into you can make a comment i can pin the comment at the top uh so that it's there but uh what a week a month how long do you want before you post the answer 
let's uh, let's let's give it uh, no more than a month because uh, I know okay. there's some people that are that have got their hands full and may not be able to get to this with this video within the week. Um, but let's let's give it a month max, and then uh, by that time we'll probably be into the series and we'll touch into that by all means. Hey, perfect. And this was April Fools, Johnny. So there, hey, Ooh. happy April Fools' hey, hey. day. Well, that's why the computer's messing up on you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> somebody it's, got it's into april it. fool's day it's yeah somebody got into your computer yes exactly uh, so but perfect cool. so join okay. us Good. again we will do, be doing a series as john and i have said yep. uh, on yep. driver files as we delve deeper into the comp the different components uh for instance yep. you know yep. errors on a truck driver application form errors yep. that you complete yep. on a road mm -hmm. test uh, errors. Uh, we didn't even talk about things like PSP reports and and yep. the drug testing and how e how easy it is to get the drug testing yeah. results from everybody um, and exactly. past history exactly. check. Anyways, yep. Uh, of course, I'm being facetious exactly. there. But yeah. so stay tuned. John and I are going to be doing yep. a series. This was the first one. And yep. Thanks for tuning in to the Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast. Where guess what? We talk about Trucking, risk, and insurance. Heck of a nice shirt, Johnny. Yep. I, I know. Get eh? one. Here, let's let's do a close up. This would be really cool. Here, get that going right. Ooh, look at that trucking look risk and insurance that. podcast. Yeah. So there you go. And hey, just to let everybody know, if if you're in Canada and particularly in Ontario, uh, Chris and I are going to be at Truck World here in April. Um, we're going to be doing a, a live broadcast, I believe, uh, or we might record it, one of the two, but hey, we're hoping to maybe Probably see both. you guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're, we don't we don't have a booth, but we are going to be pilfering on some other people and uh, and going, traveling around, seeing the show, and uh, we're hoping to get together. So keep an eye out for this shirt because uh, Chris and I will be both wearing our shirts and our new hats. Well, and we'll be in uniform. We'll Let's give a shout out to our friend, um, Bruce Outridge, Lead Pedal yes. Radio, Lead Pod Pedal yes. Podcast, yep. because yes. it'll be yep. his equipment that uh, Bruce yep. is kind enough to say, hey, why don't you guys do a live from uh, my equipment? I've got my equipment all set yep. up there. And uh, yep. so John and I, sure. on the Saturday, will be doing, yep. what are we doing? And one hour or a two hour live? I don't know. We'll do something. We're not sure what we're going to do, but we're going to do something anyway. But so I believe you're going to be there on the Friday, Thursday, or the Thursday and Friday. And the yeah. Friday? yeah so, so I can't make it the Thursday and Friday, but I'll be there on the Saturday. So, uh, so if you're there, either one of those days, make sure you look for Chris and on Saturday, look for both of us. Yeah. And I'll do a live on Thursday and Friday because Bruce has been kind enough to say, come on over, do a live. Yep. So uh, exactly. it won't be no Why two not? hours, let me tell you, but yep. it, it should be some fun. <laughs> All right. It will be. It will be. That's cool. it for this week. Johnny, thanks so much, buddy. We'll hey, uh, have anytime. a great weekend. You too. Have a great weekend. And everybody out there, make sure you like, subscribe. And if you don't like this show, hit the dislike button twice. There we go. Thanks so much. <laughs> All right, there you have it. Another episode of the Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast and all the technical difficulties. I apologize for that. However, if you would like a copy of that um, driver file checklist, it is in the show notes down below. All right, so uh, get your copy of the driver file checklist. It's in the uh, show notes down below. 